Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to part one in a series of review videos on the brand new Anyseku M9900. This is a brand new radio which covers 4G, VHF and UHF two-way radio. So in this video we're going to be covering the basics and testing the analogue VHF and UHF side of the radio first. The network radio side of things will be in part two because there's quite a lot to go through. Although I will quickly answer a couple of questions I got on social media when I shared photos of this last week. So firstly it doesn't do Zello as it's a Linux based system, however it works on LTE 4G, WCDMA and GSM and also acts as a crossband repeater between cellular and RF which is amazing so stay tuned for more videos. Okay so looking at the radio itself, firstly it's got this amazing speaker microphone with a built in display so whatever is on the radio screen is also on the microphone and all functions can be controlled by the microphone which is just brilliant and it puts me in mind of the Supura SRM handsets which I've viewed on the channel in the past. The mic has a full rubberized keypad and dual PTT, the top one is for network radio and the second is for conventional radio and it has different accents in the plastic so you can feel which one you're using. The mic allows you to control all aspects of the radio as I said and you can select between VHF and UHF, either VFO and input frequencies directly as well as all the programming as well. On the front of the main body of the radio is a large 2.8 inch screen which isn't capacitive touch, it's controlled with the buttons on the microphone and on the radio. I prefer this as touch screens of this size and nature tend to be difficult to use if you have big hands. There's a volume control knob on the radio which is also the power button when pressed. Underneath that is a transmit and receive LED indicator light and the RJ connector for the speaker microphone. On the right hand side is the selector knob for navigating the menus as well as up and down arrow buttons for the same thing. On the top of the radio are four rubberized buttons, uh, the menu button which accesses the system's menu settings. F key which shows the current signal strength of your cellular signal when pressed once and switches between SIM 1 and SIM 2 when pressed and held. The call key which activates an SOS transmission similar to that of the Bofeng UV5R and then finally exit which allows you to come out of the menu settings. Underneath the radio is the dual SIM card slots which take regular sized SIM cards, an auxiliary audio output and a USB interface. On the back of the radio are three antenna sockets, two are for the supplied GPS and 4G antennas. The GPS antenna is an adhesive panel antenna and the 4G is the standard rubberized antenna which are labelled and the third is for a VHF and UHF antenna and the radio comes with a BNC to PL259 adapter. Also supplied with the radio is a metal mounting bracket with thumb screws, a microphone holder and spare fuses, a power cable and also a tripod mount suction bracket for the head unit itself, so there's two ways of mounting the radio. For the VHF and UHF analog side of things, the frequency range is 136 to 174 MHz on VHF and 400 to 480 MHz on UHF with a maximum output power of 25 watts on the highest setting. So we're going to take a quick look at the two menus relating to the analog side of the radio first. So in analog settings we have step for selecting the frequency steps in the VFO, squelch level, roger beep, timeout timer, scan for scanning in channel mode and frequency mode, scan switch which allows you to add or remove channels from the scan list, partial or overall reset, priority transmission which allows you to select a channel or VFO or VFOB as default for when you turn the radio on and return which takes you back to the main menu. So in channel settings, this is where you do your programming, we have power which allows you to switch between high and low power, bandwidth so wide or narrow, SFT which is negative, positive or no offset for repeater operation. We have offset which allows you to select the offset between transmit and receive frequencies again for repeaters. We have CTCSS and DCS encode and decode for sending and receiving CTSS and DCS codes. REV which is scramble on or off, channel save, channel delete. Vox which is voice activated transmission and then again return which takes you back to the main menu. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to program in a repeater, it's very very simple. Firstly what you need to do is program the repeater's output which in this case is 433350 and then go into the menu. So we'll select low power, band we'll just keep to wide, SFT, 
that's the direction of our offset so we need a positive offset we'll then select the offset value which for this repeater is 1.6 so you can just type that in from the radio's microphone we don't need to decode a CTCSS or DCS tone but we do need to encode our signal with one so for this repeater it's 82.5 REV, scramble, we don't need that. Channel save. Firstly, I'm going to delete all the channels that are stored in this radio because it came from the factory like this. And then this will allow me to go back to channel one and save this repeater in that slot. We don't need Vox, and we can just go back to the main screen. And it's as simple as that. We've got GB3MR, my local repeater, programmed in. And if we key it up, you can see it opens. So as you can see, program is very, very simple. So now we're gonna put a couple of calls out on the local repeater, as well as trying to do some simplex testing on VHF and UHF to test the radio out and see how well it works. Now Chris is my accomplice on this channel when it comes to testing. I'm sure he'll be sat in the garden today with a beer, enjoying some radio. It's a really nice day. So we'll put some calls out and see if we can get him. Um, zero OGG, Max Zero, Oscar Golf Golf, M3HHY. Morning, Chris. Yeah, no worries, Chris. I'm just on the little Anisaku M9000. It was a network radio that I sent you a picture of the other day, so I'm recording, if you don't mind, in another video. Uh, but yeah, I'm just uh, just using the, this little network radio now, and it seems to be working really well. I've just set it up and put GB3MR in. That's the only thing I've put in for now. I'm only t testing the analog side of things today, but yeah, it's uh, it's really nice, Chris. I'll send you uh, another picture now. m 0 gg m 3 hhy you there, Chris? Yeah, sorry about that. My, uh, my radio started scanning. For some reason, I don't know what happened. But yeah, yeah, it's working fine, that radio, Lewis. Fuck you. Yeah, no worries. Just took a little clip of you talking then, so you can hear yourself. Uh, it's really good. It's, I'm really impressed with it, Chris. It's uh, it's only a small thing. Um, and it, It's got a, uh, a microphone with a screen on it as well. I'm sure I sent you a picture of the day anyway. Uh, I'm not sure, there's a little fan on it just kicking up there, I'm not sure if you can hear it in the background. Um, but yeah, you're sounding good this side, you're on a, I'll take it on a handheld then. Uh, you're sounding good into the repeater anyway, and the repeater's absolutely end-stopping. Uh, so yeah, I'm really impressed with it, Chris, back to you. Mike Zero, Oscar Golf Golf, and 3 hhy Yeah, okay, Lewis, yeah, like I said, sounding fine. Um, I've just checked you on my reverse uh, as well. Yeah, no worries, Chris. That's uh, that's all good. I don't suppose you fancy a quick um, simplex test, then, do you? On four three three five two five. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, SY four three three five two five. If it's clear. Just one second, Lewis. If you could just give me a minute, I'll do a short video, and you can see what it's like. I'm just uh, going to go up to a different part of the garden. Uh, M3HHY from M033. Yeah, no worries, Chris. You're uh, 5 and 9 here anyway. Oh, yeah, you're, uh, you're sounding cracking. Absolutely fantastic. I take you on like a 4 or 5 watt handheld. Um, yeah, you're doing uh, doing well, Chris. Back to you. Yeah, just let me check my me, uh, me video, my camera set, Lewis. One second. Yeah, no worries, Chris. I'll just keep waffling while you get set up and you can, um, you can just get on and get everything set up. Um, so yeah, I'm just running to the Diamond uh, X300 on the roof, so I'm on the co-linear, so obviously you're going to be coming in pretty well, assuming you'll be receiving me, no problems at all. Another nice day again, plenty of RAF action as well, Hercules will open the house before, um, just to go to the airport, that was quite nice, not sure if you saw it, and the Queen's Royal flight helicopter was in the area as well, but I, I didn't quite see that one, Chris. Right, that should be enough time for you to get a, a clip anyway. Uh, back to you, M0, Oscar Golf Golf, and I'm Yeah, I think I've got it in landscape, Lewis. I'm not very good with a stuff. Chris, well, I've got you. You don't fancy one last test down on two metres, do you? 
Um, I'll go and see if 145475, uh, I'll go and see if it's free, if you've got a minute. I'll see you down there, 145475, QSY. This is Frequency News, please, M3HHY. Nope, nothing heard. M0OGGM3HHY, on Frequency Chris. Yeah, okay, five nine plus anyway, I'll stand by. Oh, I've got you now. It said P A G on the screen, now it says P I N. Never seen that come up before. Oh, I'm not sure what radio you want. F T one. All right, no, I've never used one of them, Chris. So I, I can't help you on that one. But yeah, no, you are five and nine as well. Really nice signal, nice audio. I wonder how you're receiving me down on the. Uh, I mean, well, we know there's going to be no change anyway. But yeah, so I love the little radio, this Chris. I'm, I'm well happy with it. Well impressed. No, it's fine, Lewis. It's, uh, it's Q5. Full scale on the signal meter. Just in the okay, so as you can see, a really nice style radio there. It works well with good transmit and receive audio. And the microphone is just something else. It really adds a premium quality to the radio. And I absolutely love it. Uh, the radio itself is really solid and feels well made. Um, half of the body is metal. Um, and it only weighs 570 grams, so it's quite portable. I used the radio for quite a while talking to Chris after these tests, and the small fan kept the radio well within normal temperatures. The audio quality through the built-in speaker is very good. When the local repeater was transmitting its carrier before it identified itself, it was almost silent, which is brilliant. So, that concludes part one in this series of videos. We'll be doing part two very soon, so make sure you stay tuned. We're going to be looking at the network radio side of things in that, which I know is what you're all waiting for, so make sure you look out for that video. So, I hope you enjoyed this instalment. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions or questions, drop them in the box below and I'll get back to you. And all that's left to say is 7-3. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.